Okay, we are live now, so yeah, all sorted. Okay, I will meet you as a co-host also. Okay, yeah, and I can, yeah, brilliant. Thank you, um, Hermans. Thank you, Eva. I'm sorry if you're taking some time from your vacation. <laughs> Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> Thank you for you guys for being here and volunteering. So we appreciate all your help. Yeah, and it's like one vacation. I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. <laughs> Stuck at home <laughs> in lockdown. <laughs> okay. uh, now we can start. Now we have five, four minutes. So we might make another person. So now I will get the end. Hello everyone. How are you guys doing? How are you sorry? Hello everyone. Hi Sada. Hello everyone. How are you? Uh Mohammed. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when uh, we are, you are about to start. I will inform you during the meeting chat. Okay, Meto. Okay. 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 Uh, so the uh, agenda. Uh, when will I be around? Uh, I am the second uh, from the flyer from the poster. I guess the second section. Yes, second section. Yeah, already. That's right. And the first one will upper Dean section, and then you will start. Okay. Okay. That's that's great. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you. Joseph, are you hearing me? Yeah, I can hear you, yeah. Yeah, you are the, pre the presenter for Aberdeen section, that's right? Yes. Yeah, okay. I will stop sharing the screen during your presentation and you can uh, make you as a host and you can share your screen with your slides, okay? Perfect. Okay, thank you. I've got video in it, so I hope the audio yeah. works, but uh, it should be fine. Yeah, I, I will inform you during the chat, okay? Okay. Now, okay, let's start by uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening for everyone. I know that we have uh, members and attendees from YB uh, sections and YMEC committee from worldwide, from Eastern and Western Hemisphere. This uh, town hall is mainly going for Okay, I'm sorry for that. Uh, let's start. Uh, thank you for attending today for our YMEC town hall, December 2021. Uh, today, uh, uh, we have uh, two additions. The first one was at the morning for Eastern Hemisphere, and this one is for Western Hemisphere. All of them is exist um, and uh, live streamed in our YouTube channel, and also it's recorded to be um, see uh, if you have any questions or have any some something like to to see uh, after the presentation itself. Okay. Um, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone from all the world. I know that all of you are joining from all over the world, from different sections, uh, eager to hear about why make activities that you can benefit from uh, as a YP, as a fresh grad, and also as a student, 
you can hear some activities today from us. And I hope to follow us during uh, upcoming sessions and upcoming events in our uh, pl social platform. Uh, firstly, I introduce myself. I am Mohamed Shawaf, a petroleum engineer at Khalda Petroleum Company based in Egypt. I'm an, an YP uh, member and SPE Egypt section, and also uh, YMIC a committee member as a town hall co lead and sponsorship co lead. And why make Town Hall a co-lead with my team lead and team member, uh, Muhammad Tariq, uh, who uh, will be the presenting for today for uh, our uh, why make uh, intro. The mic is yours, Muhammad. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? And uh, I'd like to uh, welcome you all in uh, the first Town Hall for the season 2021-22. And uh, we are uh, planning to have uh, many of those town halls to keep uh, the engagement ongoing. So uh, we would like to start this by introducing who we are and what we do. So uh, the uh, YMAC, uh, the Young Member Engagement Committee, is an international SP international standing one of the SP international standing committees. Well, we are, we aim and target the 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 age of the people who just graduated, so students who graduated in the oil and gas and energy industry and up to the age of 35. We work with, to develop and implement multiple uh, programs and activities that help them uh, improve and up, upscale their technical and leadership skills as well. And also we have a strong focus on that transition period for students who just recently graduated and make it into the, into the early stages of their career. So we have a, a focus on the young professionals and the very early students just making this transition. Also, we have a very uh, close relation with the SP International Board. So we are the voice of the young members and we make the recommendations through our chair and the board liaison as we're gonna see through the hierarchy as well. You can always find and follow us on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, or IG, or you can just go to the SP website where you can find us, sp.org, and then you go to the membership. Can you go to the next slide, please, Mohammed? So uh, the organization here, we kind of uh, cropped it, but uh, over the young member engagement committee chairperson, who is Nihal, who is here with us and will be presenting later today, uh, we have the board liaison and uh, the and the other direct lines to the uh, indirect lines to the SPE board director, and we have other staff liaison where we have uh, uh, who at the administrate all our activities and we can categorize all our activities into three some major groups the students innovation and the communication subcommittees where we have a lot of programs and the aim of our town hall is to go through some of these programs today and some will we go to the next ones as well so we have a very strong focus on our students fresh graduates and young professionals we have very uh, prolific year coming ahead with us where we can present students, paper contests, uh, Petro Bowl and others. And uh, because we're trying to give you a glimpse of what we can do, I'll leave the floor to Cassandra where she is the lead for the Petro Bowl and she will tell us more about her upcoming project. Cassandra, over to you. Okay. So good morning, everyone. I'll just give you an overview of what we've been doing over the past couple of weeks, my team and I. So the purpose of the Patchable 2022 committee is basically one, to standardize the regional competitions so that they are all organized in the same format as that of the championships, creation of two question banks. One question bank will be used in the regional competitions and one question bank will be used in the championship as well as supporting the regional directors in hosting their regional competitions. So the YMEC members for Petrobo 2022 are James Whitaker and Yuen Yipang, um, who everyone is more or less familiar with. They are the backbone of our YMEC committee. I, who is a lead for Petrobo, as well as my colleagues, Ishan Rani and Orkan Kankishiev. So we have committed created a couple of committees so far. The main committee, our main focus right now is our questions committee. And this composed of Felipe Machado from the Latin America and Caribbean region and Felipe Cruz from the North America region. And they are the leads and they have a lot of experience before with running questions committee. We have Paul Singh from the Latin America and Caribbean region, Hazik 
Yazid, who's here in the call as well, from Asia Pacific, and Parang Borangia from Asia Pacific. And they will be supporting Felipe Machado and Felipe Cruz in terms of communicating with the question viewers and distributing the questions that were based on discipline. So, so we basically need more volunteers to support this team. We're looking for three from each region, Africa, Middle East, and Europe. And the main criteria is that they must be a young professional who have had past catchable experience. So example, um, in a championship, right, being a player. And this is because they will have a better understanding of what the process is like and what we're looking for when reviewing the questions. Um, currently, we have approximately 50 question reviewers from around the world, and we definitely need more. We are aiming for 10 question reviewers per discipline, as this will be ideal to help with the workload. We don't want to overburden them because this is not just a three-year, three-month project or six-month project. We'll be doing this for entire year. So the criteria to be a volunteer for this position is that you must be a young person. I mean, you must be a young professional with at least eight years of professional experience in the discipline that you will be assigned to. Um, the question reviewers are responsible for reviewing the questions and ensuring they are worded properly, checking the sources, ensuring that the answers are correct. And they will also be responsible for writing new questions in the discipline that we are lacking questions. Um, I will describe the process a bit in case anyone here would be interested in being a question reviewer. So basically, we have 11 disciplines, right? Before we had 10, but this year we decided. Um, so that's basically our aim, but we know at the end of the day, this will depend basically on how much questions are submitted. And we could try to make it balanced, but it's still at the end of the day depends on the amount of questions that are submitted. So the um, volunteers to the question committee. So Paul has the Karang, they would be assigned to disciplines and they will send batches of let's say 20 to 50 questions to each question reviewer. And that question reviewer will go through it, making sure that the questions are phrased properly because that is usually a challenge when the questions are not phrased properly and the judges are not sure what the question is asking for and it brings about ambiguity. So making sure the questions are phrased properly, checking the sources, making sure it's an SP approved source, and then verifying the answer. This question review will send back the questions to our team, and they will then send it to another question reviewer. Ideally, we want to have three passes, but because of time constraints, sometimes it's only possible to have two. Um, I always believe in double checking your work. So we want to make sure that each question is reviewed twice. And for this reason, this is why we're looking for young professionals with a certain amount of experience or professionals, because it will help make the process easier and we wouldn't necessarily have to go through the three pass review. So this Saturday, we are actually hosting a kickoff meeting with the question reviewers to explain this process with them, our expectations, and address any questions or concerns that they may have and start distributing the question sets to them, right? So something that should be noted is that everyone involved in the question committee, they are required to sign a confidentiality agreement. And the purpose of this is to uphold the integrity of the competition, because we don't want at the end for people to accuse us, our committee or our question reviewers of leaking questions. So everyone who has access to the questions are required to sign this agreement before actually being allowed to start reviewing questions. And something else we're looking into is for players to sign a confidentiality agreement as well, especially because um, we'll be using the same question set for all the regionals. And also because we've had issues in the past with the behavior of players during the competition or the way they've spoken to judges and whatnot. So just something to remind them that they could be disqualified if they do not behave in a particular way or adhere to our code of conduct. So the first regional qualifiers would be in North America, and this would occur on the 20th of February and the 1st of March, which basically means we have less than, month, than three months, but in reality, maybe two months, 
because we have to take in consideration the holidays. So we have less than two months to basically create a question bank of approximately 2,000 questions. So for this reason, we had to develop a strategy. And we decided to use the current Petropool database for the regionals. And we would be read the questions, check the sources, ensure that they are high quality, and create new question, a completely new question bank for the championship. For the regional, there are some disciplines where we would need to create new questions because we don't have sufficient questions in those disciplines. So, so for the next coming months, our focus is basically on regionals until March. And then by the end of March, we will have a bibliography for the championship. And we're gonna share this with all the students. And hopefully this will help them be fully prepared for the championships in October. And the reason why we're doing this is because at the end of the day, we want to standardize the competition and we want the students to use the regionals as a training platform for the Petro Bowl. So basically the questions they're exposed to during the regionals will be more or less similar to what they would get in a championship and it would not be like a shock or surprise to them, right? So another committee that we have is our communication committee and Orkan is the lead for this. And he's currently in the process of reviewing, interviewing the candidates to be part of his committee. So you need to stay connected to our Petrobol social media accounts, which are Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And we will continuously be updating there with volunteer positions, as well as updates on the regional competitions in case you want to know more about it and study resources for the students as well. Because a lot of the new areas like data science, um, energy transition, CCUS, we need to pull sources from different places and they might not be familiar with those sources or know where to look, right? And if you want any additional information about the competition, you're free to drop us an email at petrobol2022 at gmail.com. We check this email frequently, so you should get a rapid response. So the issue now is that we are moving from virtual back to in-person. However, not everyone might be able to travel, right, to the HC 2022 at the end of this year. Or some teams might not be able to afford going to ADC. We've had this problem in the past where a lot of teams didn't show up because of course. So one of the goals or one of the challenges we have right now is creating a hybrid format. And the SP staff, their IT team is involved in assisting us with this process. They are currently using the Latin America and Caribbean region software, which we've used in the championship for 2020, as well as um, for our regionals. And they are trying to form, reformat it. And we're still in contact mode. We get a lot of details that we need to sort out. Um, one of the challenges always will be internet connections and buzzing in. So hopefully in the coming months, we can have more updates on that and definitely have a trial period and give the students time to, to play around with the software and get familiar with it. So I, I would like to thank my team for their support over the last few weeks. And I really enjoy working with, that, with them. And I also like to thank everyone for your time and participation in today's town hall. And I'll be available to take questions at the end. Okay, thank you, Cassandra, for your uh, your insights about Petropol. Uh, highly recommend for everyone uh, to join us in Petropol, and we will have a questions at at the end of uh, YMEC presentations. So uh, move to the next YMEC co-lead or program is Ambassador Lecture Program. Uh, it's one of the unique events and the unique programs that's organized by YMEC. And also, uh, I think uh, that uh, the lead and the co-lead, Sharif and the Ismaili, uh, will uh, have a great insights during this program this year. Okay, go ahead, Ismaili. Hello, good afternoon, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the YMEC Town Hall. Uh, I'm going to be talking about some of the updates that uh, we're going to be having in the, you know, in the coming year for AFP, which is the Ambassador Lecturer Program. So we have um, four highlights here. The first is that we're going to be organizing a session sometimes in, in January, where we're going to be training 
you know, attendees on how to effectively, you know, become an ambassador lecturer, right? So in, in that event, we will train everyone on how to give a proper ambassadorial lecture program. And then there'll be questions and answers and, and all of that. You know, secondly, we, are, we have worked on the, the guidelines on best practices and also how to organize a proper ARP that is fit for purpose. Uh, these uh, updates we have submitted to, to the board and then uh, they have been reviewed. Once it has been approved, we, the updates will be available on the SPI website. Third, we have another award. So apart from the, the award that we have as uh, most uh, outstanding ALP uh, chapter, which is what we all know, that is given to the, the chapter that has the most ALPs. So now we came up with another award that will be given to the lecturer themselves. So there will be a pool where a lecturer gives an ALP and then it is documented. So the lecturer will be highest um, lectures we have an award that is the third update and then the last one that uh, we have also developed is we're going to have a, a global ALP so this we are you know populating a database of course there are there's already an existing database <clears throat> sorry excuse me, where we will have lecturers that are signed up and then a, a student chapter or a YP session can actually request for a lecturer from that pool. And then you'll be matched with a particular lecturer according to the requirements of what you want the lecturer to give. You know, that, that's going to be the, the global ALP program. All of these are, and many more we'll share as we frame up all the arrangements. But I want to assure us that we should keep our eyes on the, on the social media platform for YMEC and all the programs that we'll be doing for the year 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sanaya, for your insights about Ambassador Lecture Program. If you have any one of attendees have a question, it will be at the end of uh, YMIC presentation, okay? Go ahead for, uh, for another uh, very interesting event, very interesting program that introduced for YMIC, YMIC Speaks Gaia. It's a very, very unique event as usual from YMEC. And also we have uh, know that the oil industry and energy industry have another directions that we need to match with. So this committee is going for this direction. So the mic is yours, Sadaf, for giving your insights about this during this town hall. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, so good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Sadaf. I will be uh, taking you through the slides of a uh, YMEC Speaks Gaia today. So basically, this is an initiative from YMEC. Uh, this is going to be an in-person series of the events uh, where we will be uh, talking about and uh, uh, developing some basic understanding for the YPs and the students for the Gaia. So uh, the in initiation has already been started and we have two sessions planned for the first quarter of 2022 in Feb. So, so on the screen, you can see the value of uh, carbon capture storage in decarbonization economy offshore Europe conference. So this is a session. Uh, this would be a TED talk style session and it would be comprising of 25 minutes where we have 15 to 20 minutes for the presentation and five minutes for the discussion. And then we have policy framework uh, for CCS scale up European storage uh, resource requirement of climate change uh, mitigation targets and CCS best practices. Uh, as well. So uh, this is an essential technology, as we all are aware, uh, to meet the uh, economically long-term climate targets and to risk mitigation through the uh, achieving deep decarbonization and hard to abate industry uh, while delivering uh, negative emissions. So CCS is also a driver of the economic growth, sustainable uh, employment of the country. Uh, uh, this, this panel session with this aims to have a discussion, the value of CCS by providing and the basic ideas uh, to, to our young professionals. So I talked about that we have two sessions planned in the first quarter of 2022. Uh, so in the uh, month of February, uh, we have IPTC, in, uh, International Petroleum Technology Conference, uh, happening in um, Scott, uh, happening. Uh, so over here, we also uh, have a session planned. 
so uh, here we are actually talking about uh, the circular carbon economy cce that is defined as a framework for managing and reducing emissions it is a closed closed loop system with, which involves four r's which is, these are reduce reuse recycle and remove so recently this concept has gained a lot of attraction in the industry this has is been a pathway to deliver the resource efficiency however this is uh, cc is deals with the econom economics and in the economy uh, which is diverse from the nature uh, next generation solutions uh, must include account for the nature so we are dealing with a with a century practice uh, the the question is how quickly and and pivot so this is the second session and if anyone uh, of you would like to be involved involved in both of these two sessions so we will uh, be more than glad uh, if you can uh, share your interest with us uh, and let us know so we can also uh, uh, plan accordingly thank you uh, this is uh, for from my side for now if if there are any questions i'd be glad uh, to take them thank you sadaf uh, the questions is about to to not, to have after 2 minutes uh, uh, we have uh, provide you with information about Petropole uh, ALP ambassador lecture program and also SPE why make speaks Gaia uh, one of the three important event and the important program we have in YMEC. once you are graduate and you under the age of 35 you are able to join us in YMEC and also join different opportunities through League of Volunteers I will share with you in the chat box uh, if you need to uh, enter this page, another another opportunity for you. And I have been mentioned by my teammates Cassandra for Petrol. We are looking for volunteers. You can join us due through the League of Volunteer profile or page uh, or website uh, online. And also, you can uh, select this or uh, apply for looking for volunteers for Petrol, especially through a link uh, shared with a post online for our YMEC committee LinkedIn profile. And I have shared this with uh, you in, in the chat. Uh, another thing uh, need to highlight today, and we will have a special session for that, Emerging Leader Islands. We have Emerging Leader Islands. It's one of the important programs that's related to give uh, insights and give courses and give uh, guidelines for leadership for YPs uh, under 35. Every year we have more than six organization organize this program. And so SPE is one of them. Why make select seven to eight members from SPE to in, attend this event with some like uh, flight tickets or something like that. We are uh, waiting for the sponsorship itself. Uh, so uh, we, need, we need to inform you that it is very, very important and very recommended for RYB to apply and to be selected for that unique program for each one. Uh, it, till now, it's partially funded. You ha will have only the attendance and accommodation and the attendance of the conference sponsored from SPE. And as a side, if we have a sponsor for that, we will inform you. So uh, to apply for that, I have shared with you the link for up applying for ELA. And also you can uh, follow us in our LinkedIn profile to see uh, when the application or see the application link to, to have it, to apply it. That is our today event for YMEC. I will let you only five minutes to, uh, to have a questions to our YMEC uh, committee teammates about their program, about their insights, if you have. That is, uh, the mic is your, your attendees. If you have a question, unmute yourself and uh, ask the question, please. Sorry, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, as far as I understand, I only need to have the professional membership in SP in order to write the questions and review the questions for Petrobol regional and championship, yes? Sandra, uh, can you apply, uh, reply for this question, please? Um, so to write questions, we have the volunteer opportunity on 
on the SB volunteer site. And basically you just need to go in there and fill it out and you could submit questions there. Um, I don't think it has a requirement or whatnot. Once the questions are submitted, our team will review it. So I hope that answers the question. Yes, okay, thank you. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Um, yes, I have another question. I think I've posted in, in chat as well. So I've been a professional member for like seven years, but uh, I've, I've been studying as a graduate student uh, for the past one and a half years. So can I contribute as well? Or is it like a requirement that you only have to be a professional member? Contribute on Petropol itself or which program? Uh, especially for Petrobel, but if you can comment on like the journal programs, other programs as well, that would be wonderful as well. Okay, Kangara, you can reply for this. Okay. So once you are a young professional, so young professional is anyone who is 36 and under, you can participate in any YP activity. Um, there are always volunteer opportunities on the SB site, or you could directly contact one of us in YMAC. We are always looking for volunteers. So don't think about it or hesitate to contact us. Um, in terms of writing questions, again, everyone is free to write questions and submit. The only people that we require technical experience or professional experience from are the question reviewers because they have the hardest job, right? Basically reviewing back the questions and ensuring that they're appropriate for the competition. Thanks, Cassandra. Any other questions? Oh, yes, Mohammed. I have this money here. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I, I have one question to Cassandra. Uh, for the question reviewer, what is the number of years of experience that uh, the professional has to have? And I have another question for Ibrahim. So I did apply for that ambassador lecture program. I also got selected, but do I have to apply again or how does that go around? Because that was in 2020. So if he can answer that as well. Yeah. Start Cassandra, please. Okay, so for a question re um, reviewer, we have a minimum of eight years experience. But I mean, if you think you have, let's say, five years of solid technical experience money and you want to be involved, just contact, contact me or Felipe or one of the guys from your team and let us know. Um, there's no hard and soft rule with the eight years. We just said eight years because we really want to um, have the people with the experience, right? because some of the questions can get very tricky and we have problems where we don't want judges arguing with questions. However, if you want to participate, please just reach out to me because my goal is to try and get as much YPs involved as well. So um, I'm open to you if you have, let's say, five years experience or whatnot. So. Uh, Ismailia, can you reply for the, his question, please? Yes, please. So, Mani, if I got your name right, yes, please, you can re-register. However, you can get in touch with any of us. Uh, my team members are not here, but you can reach out to me, and then uh, we can secure that uh, registration for you. It's a good thing that uh, you were able to do that uh, before, because we, we took out that uh, database and we're reviewing it, so there will be need to have more people to sign up. I hope that uh, clarifies. Yeah, uh, thank you, Cassandra, and as well. Uh, yeah, it does answer my query. I had one more question, uh, Mohammed, if I can ask. Thank you, Tao. No problem. Yeah, so the Emerging Leaders uh, Program. Uh, so uh, I, I know there is no uh, charges that are borne by SP when it comes to the travel expense, but is there any opportunity of getting sponsorships for some organization if we kind of make it to the final list of the, the seven candidates who get selected? So maybe somebody from the team can answer that. Yeah, uh, I will answer you, especially me and Cassandra have joined this program uh, last September. For that, uh, SPE only sponsor for your accommodation and all also, uh, the fees for the conference itself, especially 
the conference have the fees for that. That's for SPE. And for sponsorship itself, we are seeking for that uh, during uh, this time now uh, from my mix side to have a sponsorship more for this event and for attendees. And if you have an opportunity to sponsor yourself for attending this, please inform us during applying for that. So if you have uh, a sponsor, can sponsor you uh, from your uh, country, from your region, who can sponsor you to attend this conference, please inform us during application or send us a mail uh, for yb uh, at sbe.org and inform us to be uh, taken in consideration for the selection itself for the SPE members if you have uh, the, the sponsorship itself. I hope to answer your question correctly. Yes, Mohammed. Yeah, it does answer my question. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you. Any other question, please? We have only one more question. So uh, we will be the lucky man to select to take this. Silence is good. Okay. Hello, hello, Ashraf. Has one here from yeah, yeah. the SPEKL section. Yeah, this is the last one. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I think uh, currently I have one question in terms of uh, YMAC, um, basically organization, right? Um, because I feel that uh, the representative from uh, our region is a bit uh, a challenge due to the time difference and so on. Is there a plan for the future also to have sort of like a subcommittee or representative for each region, at least? Mm, uh, each region itself. Uh, Nihal, if you can reply for this question, please. If you are. Yes, I can answer that. Uh, first of all, I'm so sorry, my voice is completely gone. Uh, it's not COVID, thank God. Uh, so, yes, uh, we do have uh, right now regional people to represent each region on YMEC, but uh, the plan is to expand more and to have regional uh, liaison in each region, in each of SPE region. So um, the answer to the question is yes. It's just, uh, as you know, it takes time to... Uh, scale up the committee from a certain number of people to a higher number. That's all. And uh, the plan also is to have uh, basically regional committees as well. So each regional liaison will have all the YP chairs in, in their regions within this committee. I, I hope this answers the question. Thank you, Nihal. All right. Thanks, Nihal. Okay, thank you for your questions. If you have another questions, suggestions, and also insights about YMEC, you can share with us in the chat uh, meeting, in this meeting, and also you can send us through our LinkedIn profile and also through uh, our uh, email, yb at sp.org. Uh, that is for uh, communication for with us. Now uh, we will go one of the interesting thing and the interesting side of our town hall is about YB chairs uh, sections uh, presentation. We will have two uh, sections today. Uh, first of them is uh, SP Aberdeen section, which is represented by Joseph Sharat. Uh, he will present today uh, Aberdeen section about his activities and about his uh, YB's uh, events during his section and his region. The mic is yours, Joseph. Great, cheers. Um, I need to have the screen sharing. Yeah, yeah, I will make you a co-host, please. Let me check now. You can now share your screen. Great. Some um, some videos at some point, so you'll have to let me know if if you can't um, if you can't hear. So yeah, so I'm Joe. I'm the chair of the um, the YP committee in Aberdeen, and um, I thought I would start off just by actually giving everyone a little bit of a background of Aberdeen because I think that it's our responsibility within SP and young professionals in particular to reflect the local industry. And Aberdeen, I think, is a little bit different to many other places. 
uh, mainly because we've had oil production now in Aberdeen for almost 50 years. So Aberdeen, you know, referred to as the oil capital of Europe, but Aberdeen and, and the North Sea is now like a, a mature basin, there's aging infrastructure and uh, low levels of, of exploration. So our, our um, program has to reflect that. So, so our program is, is reflecting the needs, I think, of the local, um, local industry. So Aberdeen now is, is a, um, is, it's not a massive city, it's about 150,000 people. It's sort of like constructed around, around the, the port, which services the oil and gas industry. But then again, reflecting what I said just now, how we have to, have to make our program applicable to everyone, um, Aberdeen is now becoming a center for renewable industries as well. So if you stand and look it out to see, you see the um, wind turbines. Um, there are, is um, the CCS project, ACORN, which was mentioned in the uh, uh, Gaia uh, presentation. Um, there's lots of talk about hydrogen now. All of our buses in Aberdeen are on hydrogen. So, so yeah, so, so, so that's the state that Aberdeen is now. It's, it's, uh, so we are much more than just oil. We have to look to the future, and especially as young professionals, I think it's important that our program is um, delivering what we as young professionals need for the rest of our career. And I think it's, we have to um, remember that's not just oil. There's, there's other industries there that our skills can be applied to as well. And uh, I just put, I'm, I'm roughly at the bottom of that red arrow right now. So I just added that. Um, so this is what you see if you look at Aberdeen on the internet, you see these nice big uh, buildings, old buildings, uh, old granite buildings, um, but it's Scotland. It doesn't always look, it's like that right now. It's nice and sunny right now, but um, it's quite a gray, miserable place a lot of the time and, 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 and very wet. So anyway, about SPE. Um, so I guess, I think Aberdeen is a relatively large section um, there's about 2,000 members, professional members in Aberdeen, plus students as, on top of that. And um, the Aberdeen section has around about 150 active volunteers um, with eight committees. And of course, YP is, is, is one of those committees. And in total, there's around about 60 events a year organized in, in Aberdeen by SPE um, and about 10 conferences a year. So it really is quite an active place in terms of SPE. Um, and we as young professionals account for around about 15 of those 60 events every year with a committee of around about 20 members. And I'm sure everyone is in the same position right now that uh, COVID has had a big impact on our ability to put on, um, put on uh, events. Uh, we started doing virtual events, but we found that actually most people wanted to do in-person events because it's about the networking and socializing, which you just can't do virtually. So we, we haven't done many virtual events. We're waiting to go back to physical events. So I have a, a video to share next, which is, um, it was made as more of a promotional thing to try and recruit more members, but I think it accurately shares everything that we do. So I'm gonna share that. If there's any issue with the audio, let me know. Um, it's also a little bit quiet, so you might have to turn the volume up just a little bit, I think, to, uh, to be able to hear it. Anyway, we'll see if it works. Is there any sound there or not? No, Joseph, no sound. No, no sound. No, let's go back. I got an error message. Let me um, just stop sharing and I'll see if resharing it, if it works. Let's see if that works. Um, yes. Yes, Hi everyone, no. I'm Joe, And I'm Amy, and together we lead the SP Aberdeen Young Professionals Committee. As a team of young people all working in the oil and gas industry, we volunteer our time to organise a programme of events for other people like us. These events provide a platform for young professionals to meet, to share and exchange the knowledge required to progress our careers while also building professional networks. Many of our events, such as our monthly technical programme, the Simplified Series, are held at hotels around Aberdeen, such as the Sandman. These are great opportunities to learn about new and exciting technologies such as big data, UAV inspection drones and automated subsea technologies. We also organise events focused on soft skills development and our most recent one was working within a remote team. They also provide a great opportunity to network and meet other people in the industry, which could be other young professionals or maybe more experienced professionals. And of course the bar is always open for a drink and there's usually a hot food buffet too. 
We also organise tours around local businesses as part of our Tech Tour series to get a first-hand look at exciting technology such as these ROVs at Technique FMC. During this tour, we even got to the chance to operate the manipulators of the ROV. These are great opportunities to learn about parts of the industry you wouldn't necessarily experience in your day job. We also help to organise events at local conferences such as Offshore Europe and DevEx. And we also try to provide a social programme for young professionals that may have recently moved to Aberdeen or maybe they just want to make some new friends. Everybody's always welcome. As part of this, we also try to give back to the local community by organising and participating in charity events. Our committee is run completely by volunteers and we're always looking for new volunteers to join us. We are a fun, active, diverse, multicultural team with totally different backgrounds from a wide range of disciplines within the industry. Joining our committee requires very little commitment and we can usually find a way for all volunteers to get involved depending on the time they have available. As a volunteer, there are many rewards for being part of the YP committee. Now let's hand over to some of the YPs to tell you why they volunteer. Hi, my name's Anna Petted and I'm part of the SPE Young Professional Committee here in Aberdeen. I volunteered for the committee as I wanted to play a role in shaping the different talks and seminars that we give on different aspects of the energy industry, as well as to meet like-minded professionals. Through volunteering, I've achieved both these goals and made lifelong friends. Hi, I'm Jason, and I joined the YP committee of the SP Aberdeen section because of the endless benefits that you can get at every stage of your career. Some of the most important ones are networking, internationalization, and sharing knowledge. So why are you willing to join the YP committee as well? Cool. cool. So yeah, so that's kind of uh, what we do. I hope that was um, it's a bit of an overview of, of everything we do. And um, I just wanted to point out, I think our committee is, is really, really diverse, uh, not just in terms of um, nationalities, but we have a really good uh, gender diversity as well. Um, we have, um, in addition to that, everyone, uh, various different companies, disciplines. So yeah, I think we're a really, really diverse group of people with, um, which, which I think benefits us in being able to approach lots of things with different, uh, different points of view. Um, so yeah, so essentially our program is split into three main programs. We have the Simplified Series, which is a monthly um, presentation series, which focuses on technical aspects. Um, Unplug 360, which is normally quarterly and focuses on soft skills. And then tech tours, which uh, you saw in the video as well, where we go and visit companies and get tours of their sort of facilities. Uh, and then we also have a, a, a sort of biannual event, um, which is the Emerging Engineers Forum as well. So that's kind of like basically uh, what we have. I've got a couple more videos just to finish it off, which just sort of highlights some of our events. So I'll just flip through to those, um, those videos. Uh, this one's a bit loud. So I warn you, if you turned your volume up for the last one, this one is a bit loud. So you need to turn it back down again. That was our tech tours and i just have one more video just to finish off which is of our emerging engineers forum which is offshore europe um, yeah just if we have only one minute okay it's, it, this one's really short yeah
Great. So that's me done. So I hope that gave an overview of everything we do. But yeah. Thank you, Joseph, for this um, very good presentation uh, for your uh, section, Aberdeen section, uh, and very interesting videos I have uh, seen uh, from sections. Thank you for your presentations. And at the end of uh, YB Chairs, if you have a question for Aberdeen section, we, you can share your questions at the end of presentation of all YBs. The next YB Chair uh, for the next section will be uh, Matthew from uh, Italian section. One, one of the, I think, uh, very active, uh, very active Europe section uh, regionally. So uh, to know more about his activities, about his events, uh, Metu will share uh, with us his insights and his events uh, in Italian section. It's Thank you. Matthew. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are joining us today. Uh, first of all, can you sh uh, see my screen? I'm sharing right now. Okay, that's great. Um, well, nice to meet you. I'm uh, Matteo Trevisan. I'm, uh, I work for ENI as a production engineer and uh, for 2021-22, I will be the YP chair of uh, the SP Italian section. And uh, um, let's say internationally, I'm also the coordinator, <clears throat> sorry, I'm the coordinator for 2021 of the SP Beyond the Borders committee. And we'll get to uh, some details about what Beyond the Borders is in a in a few slides and at the end of the presentation, actually. And well, thanks a lot for uh, to YMEC, to all YMEC uh, for having me and uh, well my section today. I'm starting with some uh, uh, demograph uh, demography of uh, the SP Italian section. Um, it's actually skipping on its own. OK, um, so we are about 400 professionals and students. So as you can see, about uh, half uh, of, uh, of uh, SP Italian section is made of students. So it actually has more uh, young members than senior members. And that really tells you the need to really focus on our youth, on our young members to grow as a, as a section. And that's so, um, also because um, you know uh, our uh, students now are the YPs and the senior professionals of the future, and that's really that's really key. Uh, so, sorry, but uh, it's uh, it's going on on its own. I don't know what's happening actually. So, um, in 2021, we had uh, 29 events organized. That's a really uh, huge number considering with we are uh, um, let's say mid-range uh, section of about 400 not the 2000 uh, of uh, Aberdeen for sure but we've got a really nice community and uh, of course due to COVID we had to increase our uh, presence online uh, sorry let me fix this because it's uh, a bit annoying uh, well actually could you see my screen if I do like this And these, okay. Uh, well, um, we we increased our uh, our presence online, and I think that this is really key in these times of uh, virtual events. And um, uh, we we all know we're pretty. Um, I would I would say I'm not annoyed, but uh, pretty bored about virtual events. But uh, the, the the situation is as it is, and we still need to focus on on doing virtual event for some time, at least uh, in Europe, the situation is not actually really good still, but uh, um, to increase the presence online, it's really key. And uh, for these, we have actually a hybrid uh, approach to, to events. So we tend to do it, uh, to do them physically when we can, and also to broadcast them to those who might not be able to join due to health issues or also um, simply due to geographical distance to where the, the event is held. Then secondly, we increased really a lot the, um, the focus on, on energy transition. And as Joseph was saying, we, uh, it, it's really one of the trendy topics. Uh, and in particular for us as a young member, it's really important to understand all the, uh, all, all the possibilities and potentialities that these, uh, um, this transition can give us and uh, that we need to really be ready to embrace the change and to change and actually adapt our skills uh, as young members and uh, well, as students, first of all, and then uh, as young professionals uh, for this uh, transition. Then uh, also due to the virtual approach of these last two years, we really um, strengthened some international collaborations, really key. 
and uh, and 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 also uh, we really uh, we we really are open to a great variety of uh, of topics and uh, and of formats of events. And uh, I will get to some details about what we actually do and propose to our members in a in a couple of sli slides. So these are the pillars of uh, our, let's say, five-year program. Uh, I'm not getting into the detail of all of them, but uh, it kind of actually really paid out because uh, we've been uh, uh, elected and we obtained the, the Section Excellence Award for 2021. And that's for sure not something that we achieved as uh, individuals, but uh, uh, it's uh, mainly and I would say only thanks to a really a uh, great team uh, of uh, of young professional and uh, of uh, of students uh, really engaged and uh, uh, well uh, here you can uh, see and meet virtually uh, the the YP committee uh, officially we are uh, 10 but it's uh, actually a wider number of volunteers really engaged and uh, um, i mean without the the engagement and the energy their energy uh, the SBE section the SBE Italian section would be really, really uh, less uh, powerful. And in terms of uh, events that we uh, propose, it would be really, really, um, really less active that, than it actually is. And um, so uh, talking about some, uh, some events and actually some initiatives that we have, uh, as you could see from, from the committee, it's really diverse. It's something on which SP Italian section is really uh, giving a lot of uh, care and attention about. And we, we started this Empowering Women um, initiative. It's basically kind of a brand. Uh, whenever we feel that the topic uh, is of particular interest to, uh, to women, to our girls in our industry, uh, and uh, not only technical, but we also had some uh, uh, soft skills uh, for, for young professionals in the energy industry. And when we feel that uh, some topic is uh, of particular interest to, to women in, in science in general, not necessarily into the petroleum engineering business. Uh, we use this brand, so this really catches the eye of, uh, of the audience and in particular of uh, uh, women and girls, uh, part of SP work. Um, then um, one another thing of which I'm, I'm really proud is uh, uh, these two kind of events. It's uh, the Aperin Science, we called, uh, as you might know, we Italians are famous for our aperitivo. And uh, so we decided to mix the aperitivo. So basically uh, hanging out with friends uh, with something a bit more formative. And so with, uh, um, with the SPE, uh, which is in this case, the, um, the uh, let's say the data science, uh, data, data science word and the design thinking word. So uh, as you can see, um, we had two events uh, last year, and uh, well, these really uh, opened me up uh, a lot of, uh, um, you know, some uh, fields that I didn't even uh, imagine about uh, these two really innovative uh, approaches to the industry, so data science and uh, open innovation. And I believe that uh, having these kind of events, in particular for students, not necessarily for YPs, but uh, in particular for students, it's really, really important just to, uh, you know, um, to to spring the um, the interest of them to these topics, which uh, will probably be key for for the oil and gas and for the energy industry uh, on a broader scale. So, getting to uh, another initiative, uh, this is the uh, specials initiative. So, SP shells, uh, you, you get the, the joke. Uh, it's a uh, uh, it's basically uh, a, a way to uh, put content on our social media. It's uh, basically really short uh, presentation or videos uh, to keep up with the social media pace. Uh, as you all know, I, I, I believe that uh, uh, being really active in the social media right now, it's really important to get new members and to uh, reach out to a broader audience and uh, uh, in particular made of uh, young members, so of young people. So in this case, uh, we, um, we, we really empower the uh, creators of these contents, which as you can see uh, are, let's say, branded as uh, seven different uh, topics, uh, which goes from membership to digital transformation and, and so on. So uh, in this way, we really believe 
that we can um, enhance the, the membership and uh, really keep the social media engagement high. And uh, I'm, I'm really proud of this initiative. And as you can see, I've been uh, uh, part of uh, a couple of, uh, of these topics. Well, now let's get okay, to... You, uh, I'm sorry for interrupting you. You have only two minutes. Yes, okay. thanks. I'll be really quick. Uh, well, this is uh, from Earth to Earth. It's, uh, it's basically our take on, uh, on the International SPE Cares Initiative. Uh, and uh, we usually propose it uh, close to the holidays, uh, to the uh, end of year holidays. And uh, well, basically we adopted a baby rhino and a baby elephant in Kenya uh, through Sheldrick Wildlife Fund. And we planted actual, an actual, uh, some, some trees. So, uh, contributing to building a forest using Freedom. Uh, if you don't know, it's a, it's a platform in which you can virtually buy and plant some trees which are actually physically planted uh, somewhere in Africa, Asia, and Latin America. And so we are really proud of, uh, let's say, these uh, side activities, not really uh, into the core of our business, but it's actually our way to give back to the earth what we, uh, what we get uh, in terms of natural resources. And, uh, and finally, um, one thing uh, on which I, I really believe that uh, it's really valuable for our young members, it's the Mentorship Opportunity Program, MOP, in which we, we have as special guests, uh, senior managers and technical experts uh, that share with our YPs and students some tips, some uh, uh, stories about their careers, which, we, which might really mentor them and keep really helpful tips and uh, thoughts about uh, how to develop a career, whether, uh, uh, let's say, a managerial one or a technical one. And uh, I believe this is really valuable. And uh, it's, uh, it's been done in the form of, uh, of an aperitivo as well in the past, uh, but we shifted to virtual in the last two years. And we really saw the, the engagement and the feedback, the positive feedback of our of our young, young members to this one, because uh, in particular, when the events were physical, they could actually shake hands with the, uh, with the guests and uh, really uh, engage with them and uh, get the most from, from, their, from their experience. And last but not least, I will be really quick about the Beyond the Borders uh, initiative. It's actually um, uh, a couple, uh, three years that it's, uh, that it's running. Uh, it's an initiative, uh, international initiative uh, for um, amongst the European section for the moment. And we're actually building it to become uh, something a bit more structured. So uh, keep your ears open and eyes open because it will uh, hopefully uh, with, the, with the help of YMEC as well, become something a bit more structured and potentially much wider than it actually is uh, right now. So thank you very much uh, to everyone at Poimic for having me and I'm open to questions. Thank you, Matteo, for your presentation and very uh, active uh, uh, events for you, from your side and Thanks. very good insights about your Italian section, which amazing events I, I'm sure that you have uh, in your section. Thank you. Uh, last but not least, uh, we have uh, the final uh, SPE section is SPE Lagos section from Africa the region. Uh, so, uh, so please, uh, uh, Curry, if uh, you are uh, in, please uh, share your screen with us and you will have five minutes to share your insights about your section. Please go ahead. All right, thank you. Um, good afternoon. Good morning, good evening from whichever part of the world you are. Let me quickly uh, share my screen. I'm sorry for that. Uh, Kerry, we have only five minutes again. So uh, yes. yeah, sure. Especially we're running late, okay. Okay, I think I'm having, uh, trying to find documents. Okay, let me just share this screen as it is. Okay, so can we all see my screen? Yes. Can you all see yes. my screen, please? Yes. Okay, yes. great. 
All right, so um, good afternoon again. So I'll just quickly go through uh, YT section strategy uh, journey so far, and I'll look ahead for the rest of the board here. My name is Chuck Scary, and I'm the YT chair for the uh, Lagos section. So in terms of a strategy, we decided to group our activities into two special um, study groups. One of them will be the technical and the other one is the professional study group, right? And under the technical study groups, we, we are going to deliver programs that are themed um, of software applications, petroleum engineering, digital transformation and energy sustainability. And then for the professional study groups, uh, we're delivering programs under the themes of leadership, personal finance, and health and well-being. Uh, in addition to these programs, we're also going to um, deliver programs that have to do with networking and social activities. Of course, we'll push on ALPs and energy for me, and of course, our community activities and SPE cares. So the journey is so far. So first of all, um, as usual, we partner with Slum BJ Next to deliver world-class, uh, you know, training, technical trainings, one every quarter. So, so far we have held this one called the Applied Promotion Evaluation and Basic Log Anal Analysis Using Tech Log. Um, these are just some snapshots from that particular event. It held between the 27th of September and the 30th of September. And of course, uh, Shalom Bouget also um, issued certificates to all the to all 10 participants, all 10 YPs of this particular event. Uh, so for November, November was themed Software November. We had two Python trainings. Um, one was the introduction to data science with Python, and the other was basic Python programming. Um, just sharing some pictures with that. And of course, we also had um, excelling in Excel. Uh, training on Microsoft Excel for intermediate users. This was also in November on the 20th. This one was a physical event. And here are some snapshots from that particular one with our young professionals. Um, next, we had um, the personal finance December. We had four packed sessions planned. One was fin on financial planning process. Second one, an ethics line and insurance, maintaining a diverse portfolio in uncertain times. We've already held three of these sessions, and we're supposed to hold the last one uh, on the 16th of today. So, our journey so far in terms of SPKs and community. So, we collaborated with um, Kaltani. Kaltani is a waste management and plastic recycling company. Um, we had a beach cleanup at one of our beaches in Lagos, Elegushi Beach. And there's are some pictures from that e lecture with the beach manager, you know, sharing SP's vision and mission, you know, as well as our commitment to the environment and social uh, corporate governance. And of course, one of our big successes so far has been on our AOP and energy for me at the beginning of the board year, we set out with a target to conduct 80 ALPs and 30 energy for me. Uh, session before the end of the board year. And so far, we've already crushed uh, energy for me targets, already held 36 energy for me and 42 so far. And we still have you know, seven months to spare. And these are just some pictures from some of the um, ambassador lecture programs and energy for me sessions we've held in some of our secondary and tertiary institutions. Not long ago, we also had a social event. It was a hangout where we invited YPs to come and have a day of fun. Um, at one of our recreational facilities called Upbeat, where we have outdoor games and indoor trampoline activities. This was held just last uh, this week, Sunday on the 12th of December. Pre, your voice is have been interrupted. And of course, for the look January, January is going to be our leader. Yeah, you hear us? Month. Yeah, yeah. Uh, February is going to yeah. speak on all things energy sustainability. Go ahead, Corey. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Voice have been interrupted. Now is it better? 
Now it's good. Go ahead. Okay, so in March, we're gonna have health and wellness. Uh, uh, and of course, Q1 2022, we're gonna have a petroleum engineering training. Yeah, can you hear, can you hear me? No, I think you will have a problem with your internet connection. Is it better? Hello? Yeah, um, that's good now. Okay. Okay. Oh, we're also going to uh, have our white handles and you contact us through the webpage below on all things that's been made. Stop there, you. Okay, you only have one minute, please. Go ahead. Okay. I think you have ended your presentation uh, from Lagos section. Thank you, Perry, for your presentation and your insights about section. This bitch did come from Africa. This is my continent. Uh, I'm African man, so uh, I'm happy to have this section sharing his insights and event uh, in this uh, town hall. We have reached to the final uh, time for town hall. Thank you for attending today for SPE uh, YMAC town hall event. Uh, thank you YB chairs, Joseph, Matteo and Kerry for your insights about your sections. You have a great presentation and great events that I have uh, ever seen and I, I will contact you to share with this in my section, especially in Egypt. So thank you for, uh, for sharing that with us. Um, and uh, now it's time for questions, but before the questions, we have a tradition in SPY Mac, that's uh, in virtual uh, meetings like that, we need to take a screenshot for uh, our uh, photo. So in any of attendees have an opportunity to open his camera, please open your camera to take the screenshot as our tradition. I'm waiting for Earl. Yeah. Thank you, Smolaya. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, I'm waiting for others. Anyone can join us? Okay. I will take the screen now. Uh, so I will take after one, two, three. Okay. Thank you today for uh, presenting your uh, presentation for my Mac teammates and for our beaches. Now uh, we have only five minutes at the last of this session to have a questions for YB chair if you have a question for them. Any question for SB chairs? I hope that all presentation is clear for the, for you. Uh, please, Matteo, Joseph, and Curry, if you have uh, your contact, please uh, put it uh, in the chat box, please. Uh, if anyone have a question uh, after the session or have see the session as a recorded one on YouTube, please uh, have this uh, in you in the meeting chat. Thank you all of you today for joining us in Town Hall. Please uh, join us at every uh, event organized by YMAC committee and have a nice uh, Christmas uh, vacation. And also uh, finally, uh, please follow us in our LinkedIn profile and also uh, Facebook to see more events and more activities from YMAC. Thank you all of you and have a nice day. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye-bye.